Uh, if we first go to slide one. Slide one shows the testing capacity and the number of uh, new cases. Um, the, um, the slide, the top chart in the slide shows the number of tests. And that number of tests as of uh, the 2nd of June was 135,643. This is different to testing capacity, which stands at just over 200,000. And as I said yesterday, this demonstrates that there is spare capacity in testing. And so if you have symptoms of coronavirus, that's a, a fever or a new dry cough or a change in your sense of taste or smell, then please do go and get a test from nhs.uk forward slash coronavirus or by phoning 119. It's incredibly important that we can trace the, the virus by ensuring that anybody with symptoms has a test. And of course, we're rolling out testing across uh, care homes uh, and making sure that staff in hospitals get the opportunity to be tested as well. Uh, the bottom uh, chart on the slide shows the number of confirmed cases. And this is uh, 1,613 as of, again, the 2nd of June, and brings the total of number of cases uh, confirmed in the UK to 277,985. And although the 1,613 figure is slightly higher than yesterday, we can see that the seven-day rolling average continues to fall. Second slide, please. The data from hospitals show that those uh, new admissions to hospitals in England has fallen to 436. Uh, this is down from 471 um, on the 24th of May, so uh, just over a week ago, and down from a high of 3,121 on the 2nd of April. This figure of 436 admissions to hospitals in England uh, with COVID-19 is the lowest figure since the 20th of March. And it demonstrates once again that we are making progress against this disease. Again, as yesterday, then the proportion of mechanical ventilators, uh, ventilated beds that are occupied by patients with corona coronavirus uh, remains at 9%. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, just like um, yesterday, the number of people in hospital continues to fall. 7,607 are now in hospital with coronavirus, and that is falling uh, in, broadly falling in each part of uh, the country, uh, but for a little bit of day-to-day -day movement in some of the areas. For instance, as you can see right at the end of the chart for the Northeast and Yorkshire, uh, but uh, we keep that very closely under review. But the overriding trend, as you can see, is downwards. Uh, the next slide is the number of uh, deaths. And sadly, on the, uh, on the 2nd of June yesterday, 324 deaths with coronavirus were recorded, taking the total to 39,369 and we mourn each one of these. And we try to keep these data as accurate as possible, including where we find in, in the past, um, those the, the, in some cases there are deaths where we discover that there has been a connection to coronavirus, and we add those uh, into those, uh, those data. So we can see that, the, again, the trend is broadly down, uh, but there is still some way to go uh, and uh, after the weekend effect, which we've seen each weekend in terms of the number of deaths recorded, because this is according to the date these are recorded, we've seen that rise on, a, uh, on, on, a, on most Mondays. Um, and sadly, the figure is 324 today. Next slide, final slide, please. Um, the, uh, the final slide reports on data from the Office for National Statistics, which was reported this morning. Uh, and reported a total of 48,106 deaths in the UK where COVID-19 was mentioned on the death certificate. Uh, and you can see that this, again, this number is falling. The, the top chart uh, shows those, those data. 
um, and shows where we were on the recorded daily deaths uh, data for the period that corresponded uh, to these data coming from the ONS. On the bottom chart, we can see the place of occurrence of those deaths, and you can see that both the number of deaths and the proportion of deaths that are in care homes, both of those are falling. 27.3% of deaths occurred in care homes in the latest ONS data to the week, the week of the uh, May the 22nd, bringing the proportion overall of deaths in care homes down to 32.5%. Um, we, um, we don't capture in these charts, but we do capture in a report published by Public Health England today uh, further data, some of which are uh, much more troubling. Um, the PHE investigation into the way in which the virus targets people unequally and disproportionately uh, has been uh, put on the website. And this is a particularly timely publication because right across the world, people are angry about racial injustice. And I get that. Black lives matter. And I want to say this to everyone who works in the NHS and in social care. I value the contribution that you make, everybody equally. And I want to say it right across society too. I want to thank you, and I want you to know that our whole country cares about your well-being. And I value too those who come to our country to work in the NHS and in social care. And I love that this country is one of the most welcoming, and tolerant and diverse. That goes for the whole country, and it goes especially for the health and care system. As I said in the House of Commons earlier, PHE's investigation found that age is the biggest risk factor for coronavirus. Next, gender. Living in a city is a risk, and being black or from a minority ethnic background is also a significant risk factor. There is much more work to do to understand what's driving these disparities and how the different risk factors interact. And we are absolutely determined to get to the bottom of this and find ways of closing that gap. And I'm delighted that Kemi Badnock, the Minister for Equalities, will be taking this work forward, working with PHE and many others. We value the contribution from everyone to fighting this virus. Everyone has a contribution to make. And, of course, the thing that every single person can do is to make their personal contribution to fighting this virus. In the first instance, things as simple as washing your hands, following the social distancing rules, and, of course, if you have symptoms, please self-isolate immediately and get tested to protect your friends and family. So let's keep going and we'll get through this. We'll now turn to questions. The first questions are from members of the public, and the first one is from Danny from Huddersfield. Danny. Over the last week, a number of measures have been relaxed. If the hour rate now begins to increase because of this, how will you identify which measures need to be reintroduced to bring it back under control? Well, that is a really important question. I'll ask John to come in in a second. Um, the package of measures that we've taken, we judge to be uh, safe, but of course it depends on how people behave, and so it's important that people uh, follow the social distancing guidelines, even as they're changed, and um, we'll keep it under review. We then, if we need to make changes, we can either make them at a national level or a local level, and that will be determined by where we see any uh, outbreaks if we see them. Uh, and then at a national level, we can look, we can look at right across the board. Uh, but our, and of course, we've been clear from the start that if we need to, we will bring in further measures. But we have chosen these measures in order to be able to relax some of the most stringent parts of the lockdown whilst also keeping people safe.